Good morning, evening, afternoon, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be reviewing Unit 2, Topic 2 of AP Psychology, the Endocrine System. The Endocrine System is made up of all the body's different hormones. It regulates our biological processes. Both the Endocrine System and also the Nervous System allow our body to function. It's what sends messages throughout the entire body. The Nervous System uses neurons to send and deliver messages to localized areas of the body. These messages are fast acting and pretty short lived. We'll go more in depth into the Nervous System system when we go into our Unit 2 Topic 3 video. The endocrine system, on the other hand, is slower moving, sending hormones through our body to target larger, broader areas of the body. The impact of these messages also lasts longer compared to the messages sent by the nervous system. The endocrine system uses glands to create hormones. After the hormones are created, the endocrine system secretes them into the bloodstream. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what are these hormones that the endocrine system creates and secretes into our bloodstream? Well, there are a lot of them, but a few examples would include growth growth hormones, insulin, estrogen, testosterone, and melatonin. And that's just to name a few. These hormones allow you to maintain your blood pressure, help you fall asleep at night, allow you to grow, and yes, also reproduce. All right, let's start getting into a little bit more specific and look at the different structures that make up the endocrine system. And the best place to start is with the hypothalamus. This is a part of the brain that controls the pituitary gland. It also directs several autonomic functions of the body, such as your appetite and also your body's temperature. The pituitary gland under the direction of the hypothalamus hypothalamus releases growth hormones, oxytocin, and vasopressin. It also communicates with other glands around the body to produce their hormones, and also communicates with some of the organs of the body, which is why this gland is sometimes known as the master gland of the endocrine system. It's because it helps regulate all the other glands. For example, take this chain of events in a female. First, the hypothalamus produces a releasing hormone. Next, the hormone tells the pituitary gland to secrete a luteinizing hormone. And last but not least, that hormone travels down to the ovary and tells it to release an egg. You can see that the hormones have so many different functions. Now near the pituitary gland is the pineal gland. This is located above the pituitary gland in the left side of the brain. This gland controls the production of melatonin, which helps you fall asleep at night. It also helps regulate your sleep cycles. We'll talk more about our sleep cycles in our Unit 2 Topic 9 video. As we move down the body and into the throat, you'll find your thyroid and your parathyroid gland. This gland creates a thyroid hormone that controls your metabolism. It also impacts your growth and your nervous system. This allows you to convert glucose into energy, and these two glands glands together also help regulate calcium levels in your blood. Now just above your kidney sits the adrenal glands. Here hormones are produced that help regulate salt, blood pressure, oxygen intake, increase your heart rate, and also increase your blood flow. The significant hormone that is produced here is epinephrine or adrenaline and also norepinephrine. This is your fight or flight response. For example, think about a time when you were scared, anxious, or frightened. How did it feel? And if you can't remember one, ah! did I scare you? If so, you may be feeling the effects of adrenaline right now, which will increase your heart rate expand your air passages of the lungs, and also increase the blood flow to your muscles. Up next is your pancreas, which is by your stomach. Here, insulin and glucagon are produced. This helps regulate your sugar levels. Moving farther down the body, we have the gonads. These are your ovaries or testes. This is where testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone are produced. This allows you to be able to reproduce. We can see that the endocrine system and also the brain act in a feedback loop. The brain sends messages to the hypothalamus, then the appropriate glands, which communicate back to the brain. For example, example, if you are hungry, your body is going to release hormones that tell you that you are hungry. And once you eat and you're full, your body will release new hormones that will tell you that you are full. This is one example of the process known as homeostasis, which is the ability of the body to maintain internal stability in an organism. Essentially, this is the constant state that is maintained by the body. A great example of this would be your body's temperature. No matter what happens to your environment, your body temperature will stay around 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 36.67 degrees Celsius, thanks to this feedback loop. As you can see, the the endocrine system allows you to, well, be you. It keeps you safe, it helps you grow, and it keeps you functioning. Now comes the time, though, that we need to practice what we've learned. Take a second and answer the questions on the screen right now, and check your answers down in the comment section below. Also, if you need more help with psychology, don't forget to look in the description of this video for more resources to help you with your class and also that AP national exam. Also, too, in our next video, we're going to be talking about the nervous system. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.